we've watched all these videos about circuits and you keep seeing or hearing about this thing called the breadboard. Well, this is the breadboard. How does it actually work? First, on the outside, you have the power rails, which are designed for, well, your power supplies or batteries. What's really cool is you can connect two different batteries or power supplies to each of the power rails because they are not connected electrically. All of the holes along each of these lines is connected though. So how does that actually work? Well, my battery is on right now, so I can plug in a component directly into the power rails and I can move it anywhere along the power rails and it will be connected to the battery. So basically you can think of a breadboard as extending the wires in your system without having to need as many wires. But you're, you're familiar with circuits. You're like, excuse me, you're supposed to use a resistor with an LED. Heck yeah, you are my good friend. That's very smart. So that's what these inside rows are for. So these run in this direction, whereas the power rails run in this direction, uh, horizontally in this case, or and vertically uh, based on the orientation of the breadboard that you're seeing currently. So all five of these holes in this, oops, sorry, my finger was in the way. All five of these holes in this row are connected to each other. So if I attach a resistor between the positive side of the battery and the positive side of this LED, I've made one side of my circuit, and then I grab a cable and I attach it to the second leg, the negative leg of my light, and then to the power rail. Huzzah, we have a circuit. Yes, oh my gosh, yes. And what's really cool is that you can move your components all over the breadboard so that you can build you can make circuits that are organized or disorganized, pretty, chaotic, whatever floats your little electronic boat. <laughs> you could actually build an electronic boat. So very, very helpful. If you want to be lazy like me, you can hot glue components to a breadboard and call it good. Or you can take your circuit now that you have prototyped it and tested it out on a breadboard made some tweaks, you can try different resistors and easily swap them out. You can try different lights, you know, or as you build more and more complex circuits, this is really, really critical to make sure that your circuit works. Um, and as someone who has skipped this step and soldered a project and then it didn't work, uh, done that more than once, definitely recommend building it first on a breadboard to work out the kinks and figure out how it functions before you put it on a printed circuit board and, and solder all the components in permanently or semi-permanently. Very, very handy dandy tool. They're one of my favorites. This and multimeters and you will be set to build all the electronic circuits of your dreams. Yay! Let me know if you have any questions, friends. Okay, bye!